Welcome to another interview held by EFSAS, this time from uh, Geneva uh, at the UN Human Rights Council, uh, the 54th session. Um, and today we have with us Mr. Dolkun Isa, who is the president of the World Uyghur Congress, a very well-known human rights activist uh, who talks about the rights of Uyghurs and um, at the UN he always has tried to defend the, not only the Uyghurs, but defend the freedoms and the human rights of all people who are oppressed, who are suppressed by autocratic uh, states. And today he's going to uh, tell us about the Uyghur issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. It is my pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So, Mr. Dolkunisa, you are in Germany. Yes. And you are the president of the World Uyghur Congress. So, how come you're in Germany? Well, first, thank you very much for having me. Uh, yes, I came to the Germany in 1996. Okay. Uh, I came to the as asylum seekers, you okay. know, because I was a, a pro-democracy pro students leader uh, in 1980s. Mm -hmm. I was uh, the student's time in the Xinjiang University. I studied physics and I hold a big uh, demonstration uh, and against the Chinese government discrimination policy against the Uyghurs. Because this is an Uyghur issue, this discrimination issue was not new. It mm -hmm. uh, was happening since the beginning because we call it Turkestan, China, I say Xinjiang. This is the uh, occupied territory. Yeah. When I was born, this country already occupied by the Chinese Communist mm -hmm. Army. So I grew up daily in discrimination against Uyghurs and uh, like feeling second uh, class citizenship, you know what? Then I uh, enrolled the university in 1984. Uh, I learned Chinese constitution is a so-called Xinjiang Uyghur autonomous region, autonomous law. But in the reality and the daily life, we haven't seen in, in, uh, seen any real autonomy. And uh, if you we seen the uh, Chinese uh, constitution, we have a lot of right, mm -hmm. but we haven't seen the reality. So, and uh, uh, this is the uh, starting point yeah. in my mind. So, and why I'm being and starting my activism, and why trying to educate my people, uh, educate new people, and uh, uh, hold the demonstration and several activism. So that's why I was host arrested, and I was kicked also from the university. I was not able to graduate. So yeah, then late 1994, I went to the exile, staying two years in Turkey. Then 1996, came to the Germany to seek political asylum. No, I'm the German citizen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And when you talk about this discrimination, I would like to understand: is this discrimination because of the Muslim identity, or is it because of the Han supremacy? Is it ethnical, or is it religious, or is it both? No, no. It is we can say mostly ethnical. Yeah. Of course, and the religious also. Okay. Some. Uh, in the past, this is mostly ethnical, because uh, Chinese government, uh, particularly CCP, Chinese Communist Party, cannot accept diversity. Yeah. Today, Chinese go, uh, go government and uh, uh, targeting and the, the, and the targeting uh, not only for the Uyghurs. Today is it targeting for the Tibetan people as well. Is if you see the Chinese constitution, there is a 56 so-called ethnic minority or ethnic people. But except the Uyghurs and Tibetan, the rest of them already assimilated. Mm -hmm. uh, they are lost uh, in the, the ethnic identity, uh, lost the language, everything. But Uyghur and Tibetan, they're trying to survive or, or ethnic identity. This is the problem. Mm -hmm. So Chinese government is discrimination. And, uh, and the, the main purpose and the, uh, is a, a one policy has never changed. It is assimilation policy. Chinese government so use different of way, population transport, and uh, uh, family planning policy. Uh, use and also uh, separate from family for the children, and they stop the Uyghur uh, language, Tibetan language. This is this area. To use different of way, trying to Uyghur, Tibet, and other people being Chinese yeah. and assimilate. Yeah. Okay. And. What about these, uh, because this is the main, this has Chinese, you know, this has been Chinese policy for a long, long time. Yes. Uh, in this particular case, the Uyghurs were also targeted because of their religion. So what do you have to say? Is it true what we read in the media uh, by, you know, 
by uh, accounts of you, but also other people, that indeed Muslim practices are banned. And could you please, you know, give a few examples? Shed, shed sure. It is Chinese government, as I said, is not a, a CCP anti-religious organization. Chinese Communist Party, they cannot and let any religious in the freely practice, but particularly Islam. CCP in Chinese Communist Party officially saying Islam is ideological disaster illness. It must be eradicated. Mm. This is the slogan, you know. So, of course, and the, uh, Islam is the one of the factor of the Uyghur identity. They believe in the Islam more than one thousand years, yeah. the daily life. So that's why today in China, and the targeting Uyghur language, same time as religious. If you lost your language, your religious, your cultural sign, then it's very easy to assimilate. Yeah. This is the main purpose. So today. Uh, and since since the 2000, beginning of 2010, Chinese government and the uh, f uh, bandit for the uh, and the fasting, for example, Ramadan. You know, yes, Ramadan was banned. Yeah, bandit, you cannot uh, fasting. You cannot fast. At the beginning, bandit for the school uh, students and the, at the school level and the uh, government official government official level. But step by step, look internationally, no single reaction for the Muslim world. Then step by step, entire population abandon of the fasting. And the, the, between 2017 to 2020, within three years, 8,000 mosques completely demolished. This is the uh, Australian National Policy Institute and the published report 2021, within three, because they are used the Chinese uh, statistic, use the satellite image. If you use the pictures before the 2020, some mosque is exist. But up to 2020, you cannot find is a satellite image because it's all destroyed. Some mosque change is a bar. Some is a mosque change is a public toilet. Some uh, and the uh, in the in the mosque and the turn also uh, what to say is a uh, is a public place or store something that like. Uh -huh. Another 8,000 the mosque is partly destroyed. This is the report from Independent uh, Research Institute and also. Uh, since the 2016, Chinese government collected Quran. Quran, 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 not only Quran, all religious textbook, collected and burning Quran, burning Quran. You know, so this is the the big shame for the Muslim world. If something is happening in Europe, like and the Sweden Quran, burning. for example, yes, okay, just immediately jump in and condemn it. There was okay. a resolution proposed by uh, proposed, Pakistan, yeah. yes, yes, that this should not be allowed. Okay, if you really. Uh, trying to protect the value of Islam, why you don't silence in China? Because is Islam, Quran is only one. Yeah, yeah. Is the Quran is China is the same? Quran is the Sweden is the same? Quran is the, around the world is the, from the God to Allah. Yeah. Is the same Quran. If but Chinese government forbidden Quran, burning Quran, then it is entire world is Muslim world to silence. Is Sweden is not a government state policy. No. This is individual case, yeah. but in China, government policy to against Islamic mm -hmm. value, but the country was. So silent. now you have given me my next question: Why is the Muslim world silent? Why? According well, it to is. You. <laughs> this is a good question, also very common question. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, there is different of reason. One of the important reason is money. You know, for example, Pakistan, Iran, and the, and the, the Egypt is major. Islamic countries yeah. is already depend on the Chinese money. You know, China used built on road initiative, one built on road, then they give the credit and the infrastructure and everything. This already, and this country is under full depend of the Chinese uh, Chinese money. Mm. Another important uh, uh, reason is most of some countries they have a lot of open and bad human rights record. For example, Pakistan. Baloch people, Sin people, a lot of disappearance, tortures, you know, Kashmiris. This all have a lot of huge human rights problem violation, you know. Mm -hmm. And China also same. Is Iran also same? This region, this this regime, and they support each other, cooperate each other. So it's basically scratch, each scratching each other's back. Exactly. So this is the reason. Then silent. If China doing this crime, other countries silent. If and the Iran, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, and the Egypt doing the same, same uh, atrocity crime, and China also the same. Uh, silence. Yeah. Don't and, uh, and uh, 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 claim each other. 
support each other. So it's also for diplomatic cloud with the Chinese provide. Of course, China and the use of economic power and the implement it and the trying to undermine all countries. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So is the Muslim country is very uh, unfortunate, is very, uh, very, very uh, compensative for this. It's not only the Muslim countries. Uh, as you know, in Afghanistan, yes. currently the Taliban is yes. ruling. And the Taliban has, be, because of their interpretation of Islam, yes. the Taliban has banned women from going to educational establishments and many other violations of rights, of particularly women. But at the same time, the Taliban just recently signed an oil deal yes. with the Chinese, while just in your homeland, you cannot fast, you can, the Quran is being burned. So even these forces who fight the so-called jihad in the name of God, yes, they have also compromised. Well, you, you know, this is the interesting. Yes, yeah, um, uh, your point is very important. Uh, point is Chinese government attacked to the Uyghurs, and uh, in two, so up to September 11 terrorist attack mm -hmm. uh, in, the, uh, in, in New York. Yeah. Chinese government immediately changed the language against Uyghur. Oh, we are victim of terrorism. Yeah. And the Uyghur so-called is uh, is Islamic movement and the terrorist organization is Islamic movement as a link with Al Qaeda and Taliban. Mm -hmm. They accuse all the time, and accuse the Uyghurs to, to uh, impose and the, they have a, this uh, Uyghur organization, independent Uyghur group, have a link with Taliban. And what? No. And the China is having link with Taliban. You know, mm -hmm. they have cooperated each other. Mm -hmm. And the, as you said, is the Taliban is a so-called is a, a protects Islamic value. Yes. But today, head scared is a, a, a criminal case by China. Uyghurs women cannot head scared today. In Afghanistan, opposite. You know, yeah. you cannot open the yeah. head scared. Yeah. Yeah. But in China, is a falsely is any woman. And uh, and uh, healthcare and also uh, grown as a bird yeah. is a crime. You are radical. You are terrorist. So you're basically saying that at the time that the war on terror yes. uh, was uh, implemented in in Afghanistan in that region, you're saying that the Chinese government at that moment used the war on terror yes. to brand. You guys like you as yes. terrorists. Terrorists, exactly. And at that time linked you with Al Qaeda, Al -Qaeda and Taliban. Taliban. And today, today China has all the country opens a ambassador. In a the, new envoy the, was you, just you, presented exactly. last week. Yes, exactly. So China yes. currently is the only country which has de facto, de facto recognized, recognized the, the Taliban, Taliban government. Under, under. If you complain Uyghurs have a link is it with the Taliban, why you have a diplomatic relationship, why you recognize the Taliban? Yeah. And the no is your friend of the Taliban. We hear a lot about um, so-called re-education camps. Can you explain what these are? Well, it is not re-education camp. It is China sometimes saying is a re-education, sometimes also a vocational training center. At least in the of 2018, beginning of 2019, Chinese government uh, didn't uh, 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 and recognize any such a camp or center, something not like denied everything. But China and the change narrated because this is the situation cannot uh, continue hiding by the by the by the Chinese government because quite a lot of um, leaked documents is published. Yeah. Uh, some international media also uh, and uh, uh, documented this all. Mm -hmm. Some come survivor. Then China, beginning of uh, 2019 and 2018, then Fosla Ho, we have a, such a center, but it is not camps, or this is not a detention center, or this is vocational training center. We are training the young generation for the uh, better future. Hey, if you really say this, why 100,000 Uyghur professors, intellectuals, doctors, you know, uh, football player, actress, uh, they are in the concentration camp. They have no need for vocational training. Even some uh, already retired, like my mother. My mother, she, went, she was 17, 8 years lady, put the concentration camp. She died the concentration camp. She no need, she didn't need to the vocational training. No, some teenager. So 
Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and some of the international organizations, and even UN experts also published reports, some submissions. Then Chinese government, oh, this, this liar also <laughs> good enough mm. to hide in the reality. Then change narrative saying, well, we are fighting terrorism and radicalism. Actually, this is a concentration camp. What happens there? Well, it is, uh, what was the happening here? It is a good question. We don't know really what was happening, but only one thing we can be horrible because some camp survivor and because of the foreign citizen, they were released. Up they come out, they are talking to the international media, make testimony. They are told us horrible, horrible situation. Until 2019, and uh, this is camp somewhere in the camp, you have to get up very early in the morning, six o'clock. You know? You have to uh, sit down on the beton. You have to denounce your national and the religious identity. You have to show the loyalty to the Chinese Communist Party and the Xi Jinping. Then, ho, if you drink water, you have to say, ho, without Xi Jinping, without Chinese Communist Party, no life. Without Chinese Communist Party, no water. You have to repeat it. it. You have to use all this in Chinese language. In the Uyghur language, Chinese language is a completely different language. Yeah. But you have to force it to speak Chinese. You have to learn it. If you cannot speak in this, then the physical torture. So many death cases was happening, indoctrination, physical torture, this, this was happening, and also camp survivors, most of them women. They are also in the, in the, they tell us their own experience and rape. Cognitive rape, this thing. Forced sterilization, this camp. Yeah. This is the, uh, the uh, happening in the camp. So when you talk about torture, indoctrination, rape, uh, forced sterilization, uh, this sounds very much like the Hitler's Nazi scam. Yes, it is. Xi Jinping learned exactly implemented the model of the uh, Nazi camp. But the problem is, 75 years ago, Holocaust time, Nobody know what is going on in the camp. Mm -hmm. Even today, after some leaked documents were published, yeah. you know, yeah. and that time, no, in the surveillance, in the in, in the camera, gas chamber, mm -hmm. is it, what was happening, and they, they're not monitoring you. But today, is China is monitoring this all camp, and you you 24 hours more emotional even you cannot if you saying oh thanks for the Xi Jinping you have to express your emotional mm -hmm. he uses word coming to your heart yeah if something oh you, he is not really accept this this not really confess then is a problem mm -hmm. but Nazi regime have not such a technology yeah. this is the worst than Nazi regime yes exactly copying for the Nazi regime and use and uh, implement it in the in the Turkestan. Yeah. Coming back to what you discussed just a bit earlier about the Muslim world being silent. Um, one is of course being a Muslim country, and maybe you don't want to upset China, and you're silent. One is of course there are many Muslim countries, especially in our region. For example, you have. In South Asia, you have the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, which is not only a Muslim country, but which has taken it upon them to take up cases of Muslims in Kashmir, take up cases of Muslims in Palestine, even Muslims in France. Yes. And then being so close to China, not only being silent, but being together with the, the, the slogan the Chinese and the Pakistanis yes. use is that their friendship is higher than the mountains, yes, exactly. <laughs> deeper than the oceans, and sweeter than honey. <laughs> so, you know, in the immediate neighborhood, why is it that these forces, like the, you know, the Lashkar e Taiba talks about Kashmiris in uh, in Indian part, uh, Jaish e Muhammad, yes. these people talk about Palestinians yes. living, but they never talk about Xinjiang. Well, this is the, uh, well, I'm not surprising. Mm. I'm not surprising because I already a little bit explained. This whole group just, uh, just uh, get the benefit from China because China uses economic 
uh, power, yeah. trying to silence all. I can give you one example. And the Mal uh, Indonesia yeah. is one of the group, is a religious group, is a Muhammadiyah, for example, very strong. That time, 2018, middle of 2018, very few group around the world talking about this issue. Yeah. This is Muhammadiyah, uh, maybe May or June 2018, they hold big demonstration in Jakarta. 100,000 people joining. Next day, immediately Chinese ambassador visit this Muhammadiyah leader, invite them to the Beijing, you know, then they coming back and they change attitude. China all the time use this. Even recently, invite OEC members and invite some journalists, organize a propaganda tour, you know, provide some five star hotel, pocket money, and, and use different of way. Beautiful girl, bring middle night, send you the room. You know, use different of way, and the, the, the corruption is the, the China is corruption is legal actually is on the Chinese culture. You know, mm. yes. Is it is it because of that that for a long long time the designation of Jaish -e Mohammed leader Masood Azhar uh -huh. was as a terrorist was blocked by the Chinese government here at the UN. Well, Chinese go yes, it's a Chinese government support him. Yeah, they blocked his designation. Yeah, yeah yes, yes, yes exactly. Yes, yes. But you, yeah, but China, you as, are you <laughs> you were designated by the Chinese government as a, <laughs> as a terrorist. Yes, exactly. Yes, sometimes it's a, it's, it's a computer. But uh, to be honest, uh, I don't know. He's very old. But yeah. later I learned oh, who is this guy. This computer. This yes, China really support. And they just use this terrorism as an excuse to come and, uh, and, 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 and crack down to the Uyghur. For example, my name is number three top terrorist on the Chinese list. 2003, Chinese government issue one list. Four Uyghur organization, 11 people as a terrorist. First terrorist is my name is the number three. Number one is already died. I'm known as number two. Mm. And the Chinese, that's why I had a red notes by the China, by Interpol. Yeah. That's why I was uh, dating so many country border. Still today I cannot travel a lot of country, you know, okay. despite of the German citizen, German citizen. So, uh, but, and that I have never seen any real bomb in my, my lifetime. I have never touched any real gun, you know, yeah. but I'm top terrorist. I never killed any chick in my lifetime, <laughs> but oh, top terrorist. Noisy people internationally and they understand the situation Uyghurs and they know me a little bit. And that, but before, 10 years ago, nobody know me, nobody knows the Uyghurs. And China is a big country. Oh, he's a terrorist. I was even detained in front of the United Nations in Geneva 2005 by the Swiss police. Six old questionnaires detonate for me, you know, take, take my fingerprint. Even 2017, Middle of Europe in Italy, in the room I was detained by the Italian, more than 20 police. I was invited to press conference, one of the Italian senator mm -hmm. in the uh, Italian Senate. I was coming just 20 minutes before starting the press conference. They were crowded, more than 20 police. I was surprised what was happening. Mr. Isa, can I check your ID? Yes. Can I this to the uh, police? Oh, I have a press conference here. No, no, we will bring it to you later. So. Take me more than three hours, take my finger, fingerprint, everything. Then I, I was released because of the protest by the German government. German government said they never accepted red notes. Yeah, at that time I had still red notes, 2017. Just as an example, I was detained in 2009 in South Korea. Four days. I had faced to deport to China. But yeah, so China used this term terrorism because that time nobody, oh, terrorist, okay, immediately. Take action, first it. Well, suffering a lot. But as I said, but no is okay. I can enter even I was kicked also from the United Nations. 2017, New York, when I was attending one of the UN uh, forum, mm. and the UN police came to me. I have accreditation, everything saying, Hi, can I check your ideas? You have to leave. Why? Security reason. I said, What's the security reason? 
Please tell me. Oh, no, no explanation. She firstly kicked me off from UN, but I would never stop. I um, had a meeting with the special reporter of human rights defenders, freedom of expression, assistant, uh, deputy assistant secretary of human rights, and the representative committee. Oh, uh, finally, I got my uh, accreditation. Germany and the UN, United States, some of the European countries uh, the, the, uh, uh, support. Finally, I got my accreditation, but until get to this level, I fall, suffer a lot. Even here, also China's mission is to follow up me, take pictures, reprisal even here. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, is, uh, the solution I had faced, yeah. But you were just talking about the Muslim governments not talking about the treatment of uh, the Uyghur Muslims uh, in, uh, in your homeland. How do you, and because they are dependent on Chinese diplomatic clout, on money, but how do you explain and how disappointed are you by well-established Western democracies yes. who for a long time, and even now some of them, have been under the influence of China and has, have therefore been you know, against your activities, like you just said about Italy being detained. How, do you exp how disappointed and how do you explain that? Well, this is the really unfortunate situation. This country know. At this know, most of them country know what's happening. Mm -hmm. there. But it's money. Is money, economic interest is the important than human life. Human right is the is the democracy, protects human rights, rule of law is a basic value of some Western democracy. Despite all this, but most some, not most, some, and the democratic country is European country also. Very good cooperate with China, just silence or close the eyes. Well, that's why we're talking to them. Look, today we lost everything. Uh -huh. We lost everything because China, they don't have a red line. Never stop. Continually. Today, more than in the, in the, in the international organization, all reported more than 100 cities around the world, more than 50 countries, China already operated police station. Police station, China operated. Italy, even Germany, United States, China operate police station. This is destroyed this country's in the order. Not only international order, it's a the sovereignty. Sovereignty, sovereignty of, of this country. We told them. We told them they didn't listen, listen to us, but no, they are realized, then slowly, slowly, slowly to understand. But still, is money is just a thinking of temporary benefit. Mm -hmm. If long term, long term, Chinese government trying to uh, uh, change international order, mm. to want to change uh, Western value. If you don't, you do, don't take care of the human rights, rule of law, and the democracy, you know, then is you are same with the China. Is it different between China and Western country? This is the basic value. Yeah. But unfortunately, we have seen because of the economic crisis. And the most country, because most of them country very dependent of the Chinese money, Chinese marketing, then it's too late. We warned them this many, many years ago. Oh, they are saying, okay, some country, some Western leaders saying, oh, if China joining World uh, Trade Union, World T WTO, and then maybe we not only export or protection to China, we export all the Western democracy to China. This is wrong imagination. We are warning 20, 30 years ago, no, China is not like this country. But no, is it the China export it is sovereign technology in the authoritarian regime to other country. Opposite. So China know some country realize ah we are wrong. Because this is, there is a, a huge responsibility Western country, United States, European country. Because China coming to this level, because of the Western money, Western technology, European technology, US technology. Yeah. They are wrong understanding of the China. Oh, if the economic development bring some political reform in China. Yeah. But no, they understand ah, this is wrong. So now it's you do late. see a change in the mindset of the West. Yes, little, not completely, but some, some change, step by step, some change. Yes. And how has you were just talking about the fact that you have been also persecuted 
outside of China, in Germany, in different places. How safe are people who raise their voice in the, even in these democracies? How safe are they from Chinese uh, reprisals? Thus, it is the question. How safe, I don't know. I can say I'm safe only today. <laughs> okay. What will happen tomorrow, I don't know. Uh. Despite of the German city, but freedom is not free. I'm ready for all kind of, any kind of mm. reprisal, because I already told you, yeah. still I cannot enter so many countries. Still, quite a lot of countries have a, a travel ban to me, but all responsibility continue to fight them. My personal right uh, for the, my people's right. Mm -hmm. So my red notes was delete. Yeah. 2018, up to 21 years later. If I accept this reality, oh, China very, very strong pull, oh, nobody cares maybe I had still the red notes, but I fight them. This was not easy, but finally I success. I was kicked off from the UN 2017 yeah. because of Chinese pressure. Yeah. If I silence or if I worked on this, maybe I'm still cannot, I'm not, cannot sit them today here inside the UN. Yeah. Yeah. I continue fighting. Yes, China is very powerful, but still there is some international law. China cannot control all. Yeah. China want to change international law. But you have been coming here to the Human Rights Council for so long. How much has been done by this council to take up these issues? Well, unfortunately, Human Rights Council and I'm attending Human Rights Council, Human Rights Committee, uh, more than 20 years. Yeah. Well, actually, is the Council and the Human Rights Committee uh, did nothing. All the time, speaking, speaking, because why? This council occupied authoritarian country mostly, like China, Saudi Arabia. China is the control, is the Human Rights Council. Change the order. You know, and the, this what kind of council? This Human Rights Council is the only and the highest body internationally to improve human rights situation. But this council was occupied authoritarian country. The voice of the democracy is sometimes very less, and the voice of the, the, the authoritarian country, dictatorial country, strong. They are very united. Is democracy? Voice of democracy split sometimes. Mm -hmm. Split. China used its power, power, and the split is the European Union as well, time to time. Sometimes and the European Union cannot come and say voice, make a statement. Sometimes is, is some country, for example, once a couple of years ago, is a, uh, in the Hungary, blocked to the UN statement, for example, because of Chinese influence, because of Russian influence. You know? So but Authoritarian country, led by China, very strong, united, together, immediately attacked to the other democratic value. This is the reality, unfortunately. So what you're saying that many of the countries which are member states of the UN Human Rights Council yes. are actually authoritarian, autocratic, have exactly. no respect for human rights. Exactly. And they lobby together. Lobby together with strong powerful lobby mm -hmm. and uh, yes so that's why sometimes they are success for example last year october yes the, the uyghur resolution yeah, yes the... uyghur resolution was filed you know there was also a report by the previous un high commissioner for human rights bachelet yes who wrote on the situation of xinjiang and uyghur muslims over there so that you do consider as a small success yes now that report has been written, what, what next? What is the follow-up? What, what needs to be done according to you by this council so that it's, just, it's not just a piece of paper yes. in the archives? Yes. Yeah, so uh, former uh, High Commissioner Bachelor visit even in Turkestan. Mm -hmm. Chinese government didn't let her to visit any camps, mm -hmm. any former uh, prisoner's family just to use her visit as a propaganda tour. However, this report was and the finish 2021. We know that. But delayed one year. She released this report last minute. 
before, just a few hours before leaving her not office. A few hours, few minutes. Okay. Just yeah. 13 minutes. Yeah. Oh, you know, 13 minutes. Because she was under a lot of pressure. Because she was a lot of pressure by the China, some other authoritarian countries. But also she has the pressure, also is a UN independent expert, because this report was uh, ready by the UN expert, mm -hmm. you know? Then finally she and the issues this report and the go home, went to home, yeah. yes. However, this report, very linguistic, very weak, cannot describe all re reality. No. But however, this is UN report. Yeah. This is official report. This report also and the, uh, confirm and the mass arbitrary detention and the, uh, in, in for disappearance. Some other uh, atrocity the, the, crime. The, the wording used in this report was that all these things together, yeah. and that's important, may yes. constitute uh, crime against the humanity. Crime against yes. humanity. Yes, if UN report mentions this, maybe crime against the humanity is a big crime. Yes. It is always a human rights violation. Yes. You know, human rights violation happening everywhere. Yeah. Level is different. But crime against the humanity yeah. is not happening everywhere. In the institution, council must be done something to act. This is the responsibility of the council, high of commission. But no, because last time in the council of waiting is the, this resolution not and the against China or something, just discussion, some origin section. This institution or the institution must be discussed. This is the very simple resolution. But we have seen, we have witnessed here. In the China lead and the authoritarian voice is stronger than other democratic voice. Because there have been called special sessions of this council yes. for lesser issues. It is. But since this report has been released, there has been actually no follow-up by the yeah. new high commissioner, yes, so by the council. Yes, so this is the issue. That's why we repeatedly, not only we, other international organizations, even some member states also follow up this uh, report and uh, uh, repeatedly asking to the new high commissioner mm -hmm. uh, and they should be introduced report because this report was not introduced, just a publish. Yeah. Nobody take care. If UN report is published, the new high commissioner has obligation should be introduced report. Yeah. We had a meeting in your meet with him. Uh, when was is last uh, February? We asking him. You know, this report was published. This is no is a there no time to introduce, but it is your responsibility. Mm -hmm. You have to introduce this. Mm -hmm. We repeatedly, but so far almost one year, more than one year, he yes. uh, starts with us. Nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. Do you think that China's, uh, you know, geopolitical expansionism? China's authoritarianism through deep pockets might provoke these Western countries to come together and raise this issue? Well, it, it, it can be done, but unfortunately, is the, as I say, and coming back because it's the economic uh, crisis happening. Mm -hmm. So, and the, some country leads this, for example, the United States, uh, lead this issue, and the China all the time in the trying to uh, uh, spread the fake news, saying, "Oh, this is a Western transparency. This is the U.S. CIA transparency." Some country believes that, mm. or pretend to believe that. You know, mm -hmm. well, is the people dying? It is not CIA games. You know, mm -hmm. is a million people as a concentration camp. The UN expert. And in the independent expert and UN committee, third committee, SEDA, is all, and the, and the, in the, in the, the, the is the, uh, in the confirms this, but some country, just a whole maybe, see no, mm. but unfortunately this is the reason, and the, and the, uh, is a Western the government, Western country is a not, uh, time to time to time not coming same 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 voice. This is the problem, and the Chinese government is a belt road initiative. This is a, uh, uh, the territorial expenditure policy. Yes. You know, expenditure policy. I, I was coming to yeah. that because we were also coming to the end of the interview. But I have still a few questions for you. 
the Belt and Road Initiative. It is, of course, marketed as an um, as an economic game changer. However, what we have seen, and you know, in our institution, we have also done a lot of research on this, is that many of these so-called investments, it's very intransparent. Um, they claim to create jobs for the host countries, while it's most of the times it's Chinese workers. Yes. The banks are Chinese state-owned. Yes. The companies are Chinese state-owned. So, and, and, and loans are structured in a very intransparent way. So one could say that it is China coming with money, but then that money is being paid to Chinese companies, Chinese exactly. banks, Chinese exactly. workers. Exactly. And we have seen the impact in a few countries. As you know, Sri Lanka was close to, was, was very close to going bankrupt, yes. uh, to not being able to pay that pay. debt. Uh, we've seen in Pakistan, the economy <coughs> is in a very, very bad shape, apart from its political uh, crisis, of course, but economically speaking. African, many African countries have been a victim of this. So this, this, this BRI, is it, is it really something economic or is it actually, uh, like you said, is it a territorial project to, to do it also in vulnerable nations? The whole thing is the BRI doesn't come to Germany. Yes. It goes to Sri Lanka, it goes to Pakistan, nations which are very vulnerable. Well, one thing I would like to uh, emphasize, China know uh, these countries it cannot pay this credit. Yeah. Most of them, this country, neighboring country, it is the uh, country is a very high corruption country, government, Pakistan, Iran. This. And if before you give some loan, if you're really a uh, good system, and you have to think if you give this loan, this country cannot pay me back. If no, this capacity, you have to think twice. Yeah. But China know very well. <laughs> yeah. They cannot pay back because China not any money. China, because of the Belt Road, and this main purpose is territorial expanding project. It is, you know? So this country cannot pay this money, it's good for China. Sri Lanka, you already think, yeah. you know, this, this country is in the, in the, in the... So how will they pay back? Is that by handing over sovereignty? Of course. This, that is, the, that is, this, the, this is the... This is the main purpose of the Chinese government, mm. sovereignty. For example, Sri Lanka, you know, that, uh, cannot send yeah. under 99 years. Yes. You see it. China, no, Sri Lanka cannot pay, you know. CPEC also saying. Yeah. Same. In Central Asia, we have a good exp uh, 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 the, uh, the experience for this. Tajikistan yeah. is a very high and uh, corruption country, economically very bad. China knows very well. Tajikistan never pay back this money. Yeah. But China gives them no problem. It takes this money. Then it's already 10 years ago, yeah. 10 years ago, China said, okay, no problem. But you give them this territory, 1,000 square kilometer territory, are already next to China because of the law. So this territorial expansion mm -hmm. is it related to actually military purposes? At the moment, okay, in long term, of course. Yes. Long term, but no, of course, China need not immediately bring to the military. Yeah. Yes. And uh, in the uh, some same territory, China is a, that uh, land is a one hundred years, mm -hmm. some completely. Then China and the, and the, and the, uh, bring this own factory, own infrastructure, everything. Then later, and the China, and the claim, oh, I have to protect it, my property. Yeah, doing same things in Pakistan. Yeah, you know, yeah. some because you say and the infrastructure, some because China gives some loan for the infrastructure credit. And the company is coming. This is mm -hmm. all infrastructure doing by Chinese company. Yeah, Chinese this workers. One, Chinese worker. This is all and the uh, and the raw material come from China. Yeah, yeah. Do no benefit at all for the Pakistanis people. Yeah, just uh, destroyed all. 
Sometimes that's why some violation. What's happening? Baluchi guys and the and the hostess was some Chinese worker. Then China said, oh, I have to send, send because of protects my company. Yeah, I have security. to send security. Yes. So this is a purpose. There yeah. you came with the SEOs. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Which are now. Yeah. We know that. Yeah. That's why we know this in the at the beginning. Mm. We trying to the work. Look. It is not honest. This money is not give you free. Mm -hmm. Behind the offices, you have to thinking maybe 10 years later, too late. But no, but listen, no yeah. is slowly, slowly understand. So at some point of time, the, the interest and the payback of this money is by handing over independence, sovereignty, and giving China Yes, real territory. Exactly. Yes, and uh, uh, for this uh, case, one example: Kazakhstan, for example, Kazakhstan. And uh, China give a lot of loan. This government and official is the very uh, corrupted. Maybe very small portion of this loan, this money, use the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Most of them is some government official in the own pocket. No, then, and the, the governments and China say, okay, it's time is enough. Five years, you have to slowly, slowly sins, mm -hmm. and it should be come back. So you cannot. Then, the 2020, I think, and they also Kazakhstan want to ask China on some territory sovereignty, territory mm -hmm. to, to, to China. Then is a big uprising, big demonstration will start national. No, we don't give the land to sell to China. Then in the Kazakhstan immediately stopped the signing with China, but still not uh, solve the problem. China is in pressure. Huh? What we should do? Mm -hmm. long. Give me back? Yeah. Oh, this. No, is the government is a very very difficult situation. One side in China, yeah. one side is own people. Yeah. Is the population don't want to, and they sell the land for the money to China. Yeah. yeah. And these natural resources of these people are, of course, being exploited. It, it is. Not for them. Yes, of course. Yes. So, uh, last two questions I'm coming to. Recently, although it was not said that it is a counter to the BRI, but there was this new economic corridor announced at the G20 meeting in Delhi. Uh, while not said that yes. it is a counter, uh, but this would be uh, a working together of uh, India, uh, Israel, and uh, Western countries, and even the U.S. What do you think about that? Is that a good strategy? I think, yes, I think it's a good strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, if and I think is the is the Western country, it was too late for this strategy. You know, it this should late. have happened early. Yes, yeah, should have happened early. Uh, because in the Western countries also some company just uh, for the money and not thinking in the future and abandon African countries, some good China use this opportunity yeah. immediately jumping. Like they're doing in Afghanistan. E exactly, exactly. No is doing in Afghanistan. Yeah. So this strategy is, is uh, my personal view good. Yeah. But problem is not should just a sign, not only it on the happen. paper. It should be happening. It should be happening. Should happen. Yeah. We, we are traveling. In the April, uh, May this year, uh, advocacy to, to the Latin American country. Okay. And we talk, some uh, government officials, some uh, people saying, look, and uh, we say, you don't know how you and they support the China, because some uh, global source country is silenced for the resolution or support China. They saying, look, is the US, American, or Western uh, European uh, uh, government coming to the us? To give listen, but China is coming with money. <laughs> <laughs> we need money, is this? <laughs> so that's why is this project is good, but not only listen should be. It should be happening. Be happening. <laughs> my last question, or may, may, maybe my last question, because it's so interesting to talk to you. I've seen during this interview, but also while I've you, while I've seen you earlier and I've read you, while you have, of course, a very emotional stake in your issue, uh, you have always tried to be very, you know, objective about it. And sitting in the UN Human Rights Council, this is of course a very, uh, I think a very loaded question I'm, I'm asking you. Many times people use the word genocide colloquially, you know, 
100 people are killed. However bad it is, it's very quickly referred to as genocide. Um, the previous High Commissioner has referred to it as may constitute crimes against humanity. Now, in your you know, opinion, as objective as you can be, the policies of China in your region, do they constitute genocide? Yes, it is, because why? And uh, yeah, China uh, in the commit genocide against Uyghur, clearly. If you look at uh, genocide convention of UN, five factors all happening in this Turkestan. Yeah, it is not saying myself, of course, you know, it is a lot of legal experts. And uh, this is in the, the in issues report on this. Mm -hmm. Besides this, there is a one independent people's tribunal established in London. Mm -hmm. Established by Jeffrey Nice, mm -hmm. who is a well-known yeah. uh, and a, a expert uh, and a lawyer, and also former chief prosecutor of Milosevic yeah. International yeah. Criminal Court, Yugoslavia, Chorbena. He set up Uyghur Tribunal, and uh, within 18 months, this Uyghur Tribunal collected 100,000 page documents. This tribunal start one pen, one empty papers. Uh -huh. Start 18 months, collected 100,000 page document, more than 500 people's testimony. And taking place three hearings in London, official hearing and the public open hearing, live stream as in, expert make testimony and witness testimony and the all. Then 18 months, the tribunal up to three panel, then uh, 2021, 9 of December, this tribunal make judgment saying Chinese government against Uyghurs, this atrocity is a crime against the humanity, genocide and the tortures. Mm. This is the judgment of the independent tribunal. So there is no word. This yeah. is the happening of the genocide. Yeah. So unfortunately, today at the at this moment. I think we have come to the, you know, to, to, to conclude this interview, you're facing a few dilemmas. That is that the West is not united in this case. There is genocide happening. But I also saw a little bit through this interview that you do see a bit of hope because of this report which came out, because of this tribunal, because of the fact that this new partnership was announced by the West, Israel and India. Yes. So you do see a tilt by Western uh, countries, but also by other democracies in the region, that they are starting to recognize not only your plight, yes. but also the danger of uh, growing more expansionist China. Yes, uh, I'm very optimistic for this. Mm. I told you the Uyghur tribunal judgment is coming, yes. and besides this, so far ten national parliament recognized Uyghur genocide motion. Okay. Canada, first country, then Netherlands, Belgium, Czech Republic, Lithuania, UK, French, uh, United States, Ireland, Ireland, uh, and the Taiwan last one, and the also European Parliament recognize Uyghur genocide motions. Yes, this is a big step. Until 2019, nobody talking about this. You know, we are, I came in here as this council, and we hold side event. We, we are traveling to the United States. I traveling to the different of European country, talking on this. I look, people is a concentration camp suffering. I lost my mother concentration camp. My brother, oh, okay, just very soap, and oh, okay, just shows uh, uh, solidarity. But no concrete action. But no, UN report is coming out. Ten national parliament plus European parliament recognized Uyghur genocide motion. Hundred documentation was published. Uyghur tribunal judgment is coming. Mm -hmm. So no more in the uh, Fox versus Uyghur issue. So of course, not easy. Not easy. Not easy. But I'm optimistic. 
we have to continue work on this. No, a lot of people understand and slowly, slowly. Of course, some countries, some Muslim countries understand, know the situation. Even I see some journalists who recently visit, visit China, organized by Chinese government. Oh, we see this is all theater, but we cannot write because government push us. Yeah. They understand this. So I truly believe we have to continue working. We continue fighting for the truth. And we warning to the entire world. Today we lost everything, but we continue. We never lost the hope. But if you continue, let the China interfere internationally, then is the Western democracy and the peace of the world will be under danger. Putin today and the intervention and the occupation is the is the Ukraine behind of China, China support. So no world little bit understands this. Of course, we have a lot of things to do continue. Yeah. But I'm optimistic. Well, that's, I think, a very good note to end on. Uh, I wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much. In your struggle. And I hope that uh, the next time that we talk, we might be a bit closer to Thank resolution. You. Thank, Thank you. you very much for joining me. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.